Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create the Tower of Hanoi app and um, I'm just going to refresh here so you can see it in action and basically the way this game works is um, we have to move all of the disks from the um, source pool which is the first one to the destination pool but the rule of this game is you can never um, put a uh, you can never put a bigger disk on top of a smaller disk so there's an algorithm for um, you know how to do this in the minimum minimum amount of moves, um, you know without breaking the rules of the game. So um, basically, this app is currently set up to work with three discs, but you know I could keep going with this and um, you know make it to take more discs. The algorithm will still work fine. And um, also, you can see this is not finished. Like these are not you know really um, correctly on the pool. So. Um, basically, this is just my first video on this, and um, we got all the meat and potatoes done, so I'll just show you that. Um, let's go over to the HTML first, and we're using HTML5, and basically, we have this wrapper div right here, and inside the wrapper div, we have a um, moves div, which holds the ordered list. You saw the, um, you know, the moves being output as they were, um, you know, being played. And then, you know, below that we have a board div right here. And inside this board div we have the um, three disks and also the three posts. And I think going forward what I could do is I could um, remove these um, disk divs right here and we can create them with JavaScript. That way um, we don't have a fixed amount of disks. We can, you know, set up our, our game so we can take any number of disks and then we can output this HTML dynamically with JavaScript. And at the bottom here, you'll just see that um, I'm including jQuery and then I have my main JS file. A um, couple of things I want to talk about about the CSS. Um, there's a nice uh, CSS technique for getting um, you know, a large background image and it's sort of fixed in the center and it's responsive. It works on different um, you know screen sizes and browser sizes so I'll show you that and also you see I have um, I have a transparent div the the uh, wrapper div is transparent and well it has an opacity level of like around 0.6 or something so you can see through it a bit and see the um, you know cool Lord of the Rings picture in the background so let's go over to the CSS file and basically that background I was talking about is that code is right here and we'll see that we have the uh, shorthand background property and then the URL and then no repeat center center and then fixed and then under now underneath that we have this um, background size set to cover and if we go down here to our user styles um, yeah the wrapper right here so basically I have two background colors set and um, if there's an older browser and they do not recognize this RGBA, then they're going to implement this first one, which is just a gray color. But um, because this is a cascading st style sheet and these go top to bottom, if the browser does recognize the RGBA syntax, then this one is going to overwrite that plain gray. And we're setting the, you know, also a gray right here. Um, but then we're using the alpha value of. 0.63 so you can you know see through that and and see the picture behind it a little bit um, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to talk about here well you know because we're using animations in in JavaScript you know there's there's different ways to do that but the way I usually do it is with absolute positioning so the board is has a position of relative but the um, let's see here the uh, the disks are going to be positioned absolutely obviously so um, they're going to have these disks are going to have you know a left value and a bottom value and we're going to you know change those in the jQuery so it animates them you know all around the page um, don't think I want to talk about any, anything else here oh the um, the posts here um, well yeah these are actually um, these are not images. The disks are not images, and these are not images either. This is um, this is just a regular div, and it has um, we're using border border radius at the top to round the corners, and it has a background image, 
and then the shadow is coming from the block shadow. So both the um, both the posts and the discs are done like that. So, you know, this is a good way because they're very flexible. We could change the disc size in the future easily, change the pose height, and so on. So um, that's one advantage to doing that, you know, um, making them with CSS. What I'd like to do now is go over to um, our JavaScript file. So basically, um, you can see like this code I wrote is pretty, um, it's pretty spaced out, it's well commented, um, pretty easy to read, and it was only 140 lines of code. So um, I'm just going to show you how I did this, and um, you know I'm sure it could be written, written better, but I was pretty happy with you know getting this, this app working with 140 lines of like spaced out and commented code. So um, everything's wrapped in a document ready function and the first thing I'm doing is creating some predefined variables so you'll see all of this localhost right here and actually um, I don't think you know using this word localhost is the, is the best because um, you know I'm going to put this online later and then what localhost doesn't really make any sense but basically the whole point of this is um, to create one global variable in order to avoid cluttering up the global namespace and then on this um, global variable which is an object we're creating all sorts of properties on inside this inside this object so if we looked in you know if we looked at the window object which is going to hold this global variable we've only put one variable on it we haven't put 10 different variables we just have one object which has all of these different properties on it so the first thing I'm doing is creating some predefined variables. So um, basically, these are things that are you know basically constants. There's there's no constants in JavaScript, but we have the disk height right here, and we have the um, post positions, the center position that the disks will get um, moved over towards, and we have the top value. So this is when it gets animated upwards, and then we have we're just grabbing our ordered list right here. And we're storing it inside localhost order list. Now the reason I did this was because I, in my code, I used this. Uh, we were grabbing this order list um, two different times. So um, rather than use this right here two different times and be um, calling on the DOM twice to get that, instead we're grabbing it once and we're storing it in a variable. And then anytime we want to refer to this order list in the future, um, we're going to use. Um, you know our, our variable right here and I think that's called um, variable caching with jQuery. Underneath that we have some uh, variables that haven't been calculated, calculated yet and basically I was just creating these first so that they would be defined in the code and then these are going to get you know populated with values dynamically um, depending on what part of the code we're in. So everything is broken down into functions and when functions start to get too big, I would take a part out of it and you know separate into smaller functions. So it's all broken into bite-sized functions, um, and we can just skip over some of these. Let's um, this is the um, algorithm right here. So function Hanoi, and it takes the um, the disk and it takes the source and the helper pool and also the goal. So um, some people call this destination. I just refer to it as goal in my code because it's a lot shorter to write. And I'm not going to go over this algorithm because, um, to be honest, I don't even really understand it. But what I do know is that it's a recursive function, and it's always it's calling on itself over and over as long as the disks are greater than zero. And this part is important, or else it would go on forever. So. Once the disk um, reaches zero, then it won't be called anymore, and this loop can finish. So it's a recursive function, and um, the part that I added to it is right here. Okay, and this part is pretty important too because this is basically how the game works. We're getting all the data that we need um, from this part right here. So we are getting the list items that we're going to output to the user. And the data for this game is all coming from these three lines right here. So update move from array. So I'm creating an array. Like when we use three disks in this, the game is going to take seven moves. Okay. So this 
update move from array is going to be an array of seven, array of seven values, and it's going to it's going to pass zero, one, or two. Um, sorry, it's actually going to pass these, or whatever these values are set to, it's going to pass to it in order, okay, from index zero to index six, and that is the post that it's go that it's coming from, okay. And then under that, I have the move to array, which is also going to be seven, and that's the post that it's going to, okay. And the last piece of information that we need is um, the disk order. So, so which disk? And if we, the easiest way to see this data is um, right here. So we have the disk number, and then we have the name of the post it's coming from, and the name of the post it's going to. Disk number, and where it's coming from, and you know where it's going to. So, basically, what we're doing is we're just pushing um, these different um, strings essentially onto onto these arrays and we're going to use these arrays which are these will always be the same length no matter how many disks we're doing this with and this is our core data we're using um, in order to um, in order to you know be able to know where our animations should go and, and yeah so all of the data is right there and um, I see this video is 11 minutes long already so I think I'm going to stop here and I'm going to talk about the rest of it in the next video.